LabVIEW 2019 has officially been released and in this video I'm going to take you through what's new in LabVIEW 2019. LabVIEW 2019 has the same look and feel on the welcome screen so let's just control N and open up a new VI and find out what's new. If we right click the block diagram, look at the functions palette, we have a new sub palette called collection. Collection has maps and sets. So let's go through maps and sets and find out what they are. Starting off with maps, which is a brand new data type in LabVIEW, we can have a collection of key value pairs. An example of that I brought up on the screen where I have a chunk of text and we're going to iterate through that text and count how many times individual words are called. So if we run this code, you can see the word all was called once, the word and was called six times, the word brief was called once. So we have this collection of key and value, hence the definition of a map. A map is a collection of key value pairs. On the block diagram, you can see we're initializing this map like we would any other shift register. And on every iteration, we're taking each word and either adding that key value pair to the map or increasing the value of an existing element in that map. If we right click and go to the block diagram under collection and map, you'll see a rich API here for building a map, inserting, deleting from, invent some map statistics as well, using the map max and min functions. Cool, let's head over to sets now. I've written a really quick example to demonstrate what a set is and what we can do with a set. Now a set is a collection of unique elements of the same data type. So let's have a look at the example to find out what I mean by that. So if I run this VI, I'm going to add an extra element to the set every time there's a value change on this new Mac. So if I go up to one, we add one to the set. If we add two, we add two to the set, three and four and five, etc. If I now try and re-add the number four, you see we were unable to add the same value to the set. And we got a Boolean flag to say not complete as well. So I can't add the numbers one to five again, but I could add the number zero or minus one or minus two. I can also remove from sets. So if I deselect add value, I can remove from sets as well. And you can see my set is getting smaller and smaller but if I try and remove a value that isn't in my set, again, I get a Boolean flag out to say the operation was unavailable. If we have a look on the block diagram, again, we're initializing the set in the same way we would initialize any other shift register. Here, I've initialized a set with an integer, but I could actually put in any data type and change the data type of the set. So here, I've just changed it to a string. Inside the event structure, I'm inserting into the set or I'm removing from the set. And in the timeout case, I've created a set indicator. That was a quick whistle stop tour of sets and maps. Now I want to talk about more of the LAVI environment features, starting off with the front panel. You can see here that the front panel is too small. It's not the right size. I can do front panel cleanup, which is control and U. You can see that it's been resized and it now shows all of the controls and indicators. But let's say you don't want to show all of your front panel at the same time. In LabVIEW 2019, we can abstract the runtime and the edit time view of your front panel. So this would be your typical edit time view where you can see all of your controls and indicators, including your error in and your error out. But during runtime, you only want to be showing these. So let's go into the VI properties and make that happen. So if I click Control I, and then go into Window Runtime Properties. I need to select Control Pane's Origin at Runtime. We'll have that at Centered, and then deselect Current Panel Size, and click OK. Great, as we resize our window now, oh, look, there's a brand new border here, which is actually the outline of what we set our runtime window as. You can see that border goes all the way around the edges. But if I click Control R, during runtime, our user interface shrinks down to those small edges. If I stop the VI, it goes back to its original state. Great, so we've abstracted the runtime UI and the edit time UI. So now we've added the error clusters on the front panel. Let's head over to the block diagram and implement some error handling. 
So I'm just going to full screen this. And very typically in sub VIs, we might have a case structure controlled by the error in, error out. So let's just add one of those. And as we go into the error case, notice how it's actually error dot dot. So in Levy 2019, our error cases, we can differentiate between different error codes. That's pretty neat. So for this error case, I'm gonna say, if error 43 comes in, execute a piece of code. So let's just put down a one button uh, dialog box and type in error 43. So now we have a case for no error, error 43, and we're now going to need to have a default case for all of the other errors. So again, we can right click, add case after, and then type in default. And I'm just going to wire the error through. Now that's done, let's test it out using an error ring. So if I just right click, go into dialog and user interfaces, error ring, and wire it into the case structure, I can now go to select error 43. Now notice here we have a filter option. So if I go into LabVIEW, I can now filter down into finding the error code I want. So I know that error 43 is when someone cancels a dialog box. So if I type in cancel, I have operation cancelled by user and I can click OK. So the filter option there is yet another addition to LabVIEW 2019. Hopefully we're all familiar with execution highlighting where we can click the light bulb, go to run and then watch the code execute at a much slower rate. This is great for debugging. However, very often we only want to debug a small section of code and not the entire VI. In Levy 2019, we can toggle highlight execution for just specific parts. So let's stop this VI. Let's say on the block diagram, I only want to slow down the code for this event case. So I'm going to disable highlight execution. You then right click my set here, go to custom probe, then toggle execution highlighting. So that's going to toggle execution highlighting on. I'm now going to toggle it back off on the other side of the case structure. My custom probe, toggle execution highlighting. And now let's run our code. And remember we have the runtime window sizing there. So now when I change a value, this case is now slowing down for highlight execution, but the rest of the code doesn't slow down. Whilst we're on the topic of probes, for certain data types, there's another custom probe which will record the probe history. An example of this is an I32. So let's right click the value to add or remove, go to custom probe, event history. Now, as we change this value, the history gets added and appended to. So we can see what that value used to be. We could also reset that history but notice the reset only takes place the next time that probe is called. So now there's just a couple of quick fire miscellaneous things that I want to go through as well. The first is we can now create a cluster from just highlighting constants on the block diagram, right clicking, then create clusters from selection. You can also create constants and controls and indicators. Pretty cool. The next is from an array, we can create a scalar. So you could right click, Go to create, scalar, event scalar control or constant. However, if I want to make either of those, typically I'll hold down control, click and drag. Then to create a control, I would right click and go to create control. On that note, notice how create constant, create control and create indicator are now at the top of that menu item. Next, we have a converter function going from a numeric into a U8. If we want to change this, we could right click, go to replace conversion. There we have a nice neat list here of different data types. Let's change it to a double. Next, let's say we're doing object oriented programming and we have lots of abstract classes and lots of concrete classes. If we have a dynamic dispatch VI like this one here and we double click, the choose implementation window now has a block diagram preview on it. So if we have a look at the class method, we see the block diagram here, we can open this window. And then if we go to the child method and select that, we can see, ah, this is the VI with the code. So I'm going to open up this implementation. Next, we have a string control. So on the block diagram, notice how 
there's a little arrow that's appeared in the corner here. That's because the string is too long to fit on the screen. But if I make the indicator longer, and there you go, the arrow goes away because it can show all of the characters. Lastly, I want to show you two extra advanced file I.O. functions, the create directory recursive VI and the create file and containing folders VI. So you can find both of these by going into file I.O., then advanced file functions and they're at the bottom here. I'm particularly excited about these because I'm currently working on a piece of software that has a file save module. Great, I really hope this video has been useful and informative to all of you. There are a couple more features of LAVI 2019, but I'll let you explore those for yourselves. If you do come across any more features, please leave them in the comments below. Please like, comment and subscribe and always leave your feedback. Catch you later.